restricted, not able to do things, having to sit this one out. And I'm very thankful and very happy that I went ahead and got it done. I can't wait to get the left one done. I'm going to really think I'm more of that. But, you know, so thank you all so much for watching. This will be my last foot video in regards to my right foot. I will be vlogging the full journey from beginning to end with the left foot. You'll see all of the pre-operative appointments. You'll see me going to get the blood work done, all the paperwork. You'll see the, the doctor's appointments with Dr. B. And you'll see me going to the outpatient facility to get it done. So it'll be pretty cool, I think. But you know. Hello everyone. Welcome to Shanae's Law. I am Shanae. I know I've been MIA, but I've been dealing with a lot. I've been handling business, dealing with life challenges, and I am actually preparing to close a big chapter in my life. You saw the intro, so apparently that means I have been preparing to have my last foot surgery. I am more than happy more excited to get this over with to finish this journey so i thought today would be a good time to share with you all some of the things that i'm going to be doing to prepare for my last foot surgery super excited i think a lot of people don't really know what all goes into having a bionectomy a tailored bionectomy and a hammer toe correction like my my situation is a little bit extra some of you may have a more mild surgery and you don't have to be a little extra but better it's better to be overly prepared and to be under prepared so today we're going to talk about some things that are going to help you ease into this situation let it go a little bit more smoothly and to how to properly navigate the situation so uh, of course preparing for any surgery can be very challenging and but there are a lot of things that you can do and there are a lot of essentials that everybody must have when they're preparing for surgery especially a bunion surgery especially if it's going to be massive like mine. Let's just jump right on in. And of course, these things I'm going to talk to you today are going to allow this process to be more easy and more manageable because y'all are going to be kind of miserable, especially maybe that first week, but the lack of mobility is what makes it so irritating. But let's just jump in, okay? So number one, a leave. Now, of course, your doctor is going to prescribe you a painkiller for me, it was Percocex, and uh, I told you if you follow this, if you follow my channel, you should be privy to the playlist that I have. I'll post it right here. Make sure that you are gonna go back and watch that if this is your first time coming here, uh, first time watching this video, and you're unfamiliar with my bunny at the me, tennis bunny at the me, and hammer toe correction on the right foot. Go watch that first because now I'm gonna tell you what I did to prepare last time and how I'm preparing this time. I was on Percocets for, let's see, I had the surgery, had the surgery, excuse me, March 9th, 2018. So Friday night, Saturday, by Sunday, three o'clock, I was done with the Percocets and I went back to this. I didn't like the way they made me feel. Aleve is really good. I can't do Advil. Advil does nothing for me. I got this from Sam's and this is actually the same bottle that I got for last year. It does not expire until January of next year. So, hey works for me but again everybody can't take those hard drugs and if you around people who you know you can't trust you don't need to be around the prescription opioids <laughs> anyway somebody might steal them might sell them who knows but yeah so i definitely i'm gonna go back to these probably on day three or four depending on how i feel because i don't want to be on a prescription opioid too long i want to avoid addiction i did a really good job last time i just took them for the most massive amounts of pain that I had which was like the first three to four days but then I took these and I just stand on top of it all right so let's just move on number two trash bags now a lot of y'all gonna be like trash bags yeah so you can go to the dollar store or you can get the little 98 cent from Walmart trash bags a couple things about trash bags of course it's gonna help you stay neat clean organized whatever now when you are having a surgery it's gonna help you keep things clutter free um, it's handy to have on hand, but most importantly, you're going to need to cover your cast on your leg when you're showering or bathing or however you're going to get yourself clean. You cannot get that wet. You can't get the soft cast wet and you can't get the hard cast wet. So you've got to cover it. So every time I took my, um, 
my wash up shower situation I had going on, the, the, the castle's covered. Not only that, get in and out of the car, go into your appointments or wherever you're going. Anytime you have to travel, it could rain. You cannot get this cast wet. So keep you a trash bag in the well keep some in the car or keep some keep at least one in your purse or just on your purse and of course you can need them in the bathroom to keep it um, covered up from getting wet you don't want that to get ruined and of course three i would say speaking of which the shower seat now i ain't about to go up, up in the bathroom and show you shower seat and all of that but you know what a shower seat is i'll put that picture back up now what you do is you set it inside of the shower itself and this time i'll be it's gonna be a lot better for me because when i sit down this leg is gonna be out the shower Last time I was the right leg and not anybody got time to be going through all of that. So yeah, you'll set the shower seat inside of the actual shower, depending on which leg is getting fixed. You'll be able to hopefully set the cast outside of the shower to help it from not getting wet. Just be careful getting up and down. It can be quite tragic. So it's going to allow you to shower while sitting down and um, make sure you keep that leg out of a good range, but a safe range for you not to fall, slip and break something else. Number four. Now, a lot of people don't like to talk about this, but I'm a very real person. I have some of the most detailed bunion videos on the internet. Nobody's videos go and give you the nitty gritty like me. Okay. Now, if you know anything about prescription opioids, they can be a lot of things. Yes, they can be addictive. Yes, they can make you feel loopy, but they can also back you up. You're going to need a stool softener. And it's not TMI because this is your body and they about to put these pills in you. You're going to need a stool softener. The, uh, otherwise, you're going to be constipated. You're going to be backed up. You can't, your body can't function. You can, like me, I was backed up last time. I was so nauseous and I, I, I was probably dehydrated. I was extremely nauseous and my doctor did not prescribe me one. He didn't even mention it. So I got beef with you, Dr. B. I got beef with you, Dr. B. He didn't mention it until like I came to that first you know, pre-op appointment, my mom told me, hey, she's going through it. And he said, just go to the store and get a stool softener. So that's what we did. And it's going to help aid in your digestive health while using that prescription opioid. Now, once you're off of that, uh, whatever it is, ox, cotton, Percocet, whatever you're on, you don't have to take it no more. But while you're on it, you definitely want to make sure you got something to keep it flowing nicely. If you don't, girl, you're not going to go there. All right, number five, your prescription painkillers. Now your podiatrist or your foot surgeon is going to prescribe that. Hopefully, if you have a really great doctor like I did, when you go to your last pre-surgery appointment with them, they'll pres uh, prescribe them and allow you to go pick them up prior to the surgery. But that's going to relieve the pain and it'll be really good to have it on hand while you already have it before the surgery because think about it a lot of people ain't trying to go through all of that torture they ain't ate all day mind you, you can't eat so you don't want to leave the outpatient facility and go to the pharmacy a lot of people are doing that but you don't want to do that you want to go home you want to eat you want to lay your tail down and ice that leg and elevate so hopefully your doctor can do that beforehand but you will have that and you will also hopefully get nausea pills. Now, he did prescribe me a nausea pill along with my prescription pill last time. I'm pretty sure he's going to do it again. But um, your anesthesia is going to, is and can cause a lot of nausea after the surgery. That's one of the side effects, unfortunately. I um, myself had a lot of bad nausea. It was bad. I could keep anything down. And if your provider does not prescribe you one then you might want to go ahead and get that prior to the surgery or at least ask about it because if your insurance doesn't cover it or it feels like it's something you can get over the counter go ahead and get that before so you can have all this stuff at home even a stool softener ask because if your prescription you know if your um your insurance policy doesn't cover it, it's better for you to know these things before than when you need them and you feeling bad or you know, because everybody don't have somebody that's going to be with them during the surgery to take them here and there, go get it for them. And you don't want to wait two days for Walmart, or Amazon Prime shipping. So get it before cause, you know, relieve yourself of any discomfort, pain and stress down the road. But definitely ask and if they don't just go to the store and have it sitting at home for you. And baby aspirin. So another thing that my doctor tried to get was a blood thinner. A blood thinner is important because after that surgery, depending on how much work they do or not, your leg is gonna be sitting up and you're gonna be sitting down at least the first few days. You're gonna be feeling like crap. You don't want any blood clots to set up. 
So with the blood thinner, it's going to allow the blood to flow a lot more easily and to prevent blood clots. But if your insurance doesn't cover it, get you baby aspirin. Again, your doctor will probably tell you these things, but the baby aspirin is going to act like a blood thinner. It's going to help prevent the blood clots and keep everything going nice and smoothly. So you don't have to worry about that. And supplements. Now this time, if you watch this channel, you know I had a very lengthy recovery. The right side of my foot, where the, the fifth metatarsal would not heal. It took a very long time. I ended up with my trusty estrogen, which I still have my estrogen machine. And I, it still works. So I'm excited about that. But what you want to do is make sure you have some supplements. If you don't plan on eating extremely healthy during your recovery, then you might need a little help. So for me, I actually went all out this time. I got my zinc. Yes, God, honey, I'm not going to be no three months, none weight bearing this time. I have my zinc. I have my calcium. I have my, who else? Chlorophyll. Look up the look up the supplements though, because everybody's different. I've done a lot of research. I began my journey back in September of 2017, and I restarted doing all of this research again in July of this year, just to make sure that I'm properly healing and I'm taking care of myself. Because I do would like to um I do try different things when it comes to health, and I lean towards more Eastern philosophies and medicines. I don't think we need to do so much of the western thing because it ain't for everybody and everybody's body is not as receptive so i'm really gonna be relying on supplements harder this time than last time i was on them but now we're gonna prevent everything chlorophyll i have my copper and who else i have iron pills too i got iron pills too i have those because i i i want to be healthy I don't want my blood. Yeah, it's going to be blood, uh, thinning out because of the baby aspirin, but I still want to be healthy. And then it's going to be next month. I don't have the actual date of the surgery yet. Today is September the 20... What is today? Today is September the 21st, excuse me. And it's next month. I'm going to find out actually on Monday. So if I'm done editing this video on time, I'll put that date in for you. I'll put it right here. Anyway, I'll find out the date. But point is this. I want to make sure that I'm ready. And that I'm doing all that I can to have a speedy recovery. And these supplements, you know, it's health. Supplements are going to be good. They're going to aid in your healing, whether it be your digestive system, your blood flow, your circulation. Because, again, we don't want any blood clots. And I want to be healthy and happy. And I want to be able to get back to work and out of going to physical therapy because I'm doing that too. So, yeah, it's going to promote bone health, healing, all those good things. Why not? I might, It might be extra, but it can't hurt, you know? And you also, moving on from all these supplements I've got. Let me set some of this stuff down. Now, foods. So also what I'm going to do, of course, I'm not going to get up and show y'all my kitchen. Soups, vegetables, fruits, water. They're going to aid in the healing properties and process for your body. It's going to help nurture you because what you eat is going to be very important when your body's trying to heal. You shouldn't be eating all that junk food and all that fast food, all processed food. You want to make sure that that diet is a lot cleaner, especially right then. It's such a, a poor, important time for your body. It's going to be in emergency defense mode as it is because you just had a big surgery, depending on how big your foot surgery is going to be. You want to make sure you're doing everything you can to aid in that healing and make it easier on your body because it. If you do that, you have a better chance of having a healthy, happier healing process as opposed to just not putting in any effort. Okay? Moving on. And I already said water, but of course a lot of us are eco-friendly, so we prefer to have our water bottles, our reusable water bottles on hand. Now, if you don't have several of those lying around and you don't have help, because I know my mother and my brother will be looking out for me during my time. They'll be refilling mine. You might want to consider packs of water. You might have to get the bottled water just for the time being to make sure you recycle them. Make sure you recycle them. But you might want to have those easily accessible as well. Because you do need to make sure that you are properly hydrating. Water is going to be extremely important. Not just for the digestive and the healing, but for the dehydration. Remember, you're going to be in an opioid. Okay? You're going to be on some Percocets. Or some Oxycontin or Lord knows. Uh, probably not, you know, you shouldn't be on those Xanax. Anyway, 
You're going to be on some heavy drugs right now. You're healing. You just had surgery. You need water. You need water anyway, but you really, really need it now. Especially if you don't want to be on these stool softeners. You need some water. Okay? Water. Move up. Snacks. Snacks, preferably healthier. You know, preferably, you know, your, uh, your peanuts and cashews, a little fruit here and there. But you want snacks, so you want them nearby. You want those easily accessible as well. So you might want to go to, you know, like a Walmart, a Sam's Club, get the little packs. It can be, you know, some little fruit gummies or something. But you're going to need them near. That way you can get to them, especially when you have to take your medicine. Because it just hit me that you got to take that medicine like every three to four hours. And if you're in between meals, you need to have something in there. To help the medicine work faster so have your snacks i also have my gold bond radiance renewal lotion i know i mentioned this before and it's going to help me get the moisture back in my leg after the cast so for me i had this last time i had the tube i think i showed y'all this is really good this is going to help that dead skin get um well i'm going to exfoliate the leg this time y'all but the cast, remember, I'm going to have the soft cast on for probably about two weeks and the hard cast for four. Then uh, week four through six, I had a smaller cast just around the foot because I remember I had those three pins in my foot. So I'll have that. But once the cast is off, y'all, like that skin on your leg, it'd be dead. So I'm going to exfoliate and then I'm going to start just packing this on to get the skin back on my leg, back healthy and where it was prior to my surgery. So, but you don't have to use Gold Bond. I recommend it. it's really great. You can use a really good lotion. You can use Cetaphil. You can use Jergens. You can use Vaseline. You can use Dove. But use a good lotion, not some cheap water stuff. Try to get like one that's like thicker cream and has essential oils in it. You know, almond oil, coconut oil. Get an oil enriched, thicker lotion that's going to help aid in the health of the skin and prevent the dryness. It's, a, it's worth it. Okay. And uh, Muna, plant-based meals. I do believe kind of we spoke earlier on um, soups and vegetables and fruit, but more plant-based meals, easier on the body, easier on the digestive system, especially on those opioids, on that part, whatever you're going to be on. Uh, I'm definitely going to lean towards that this time. So, of course, they actually have frozen meals that you can get that are plant-based. It doesn't always have to be, you know, uh, a situation where you're just getting a hungry man dinner or something like they actually got plant-based. Just do the research. I'm doing the research now, and I'm actually finding out they got, like, veggie burgers and everything in the frozen food section. So I'm going to definitely look further into that this time and give it a whirl. Muna. Oh, snap. Okay. Now, I was on a knee scooter. If you are, if you watch this channel, you're familiar. I was on a knee scooter for three months, y'all, because I couldn't walk. What I noticed, hopefully, God willing, we're not going to... We're not going to be three months this time. But on the knee scooter, maybe it was because I was on it longer than expected. <sighs> my knee, my poor knee, it started getting bruised up. And my mom had put a towel on the knee scooter seat. And then I had put like an old soft t-shirt on top of the towel just for cushion. But after a while, I guess it was not enough. So just in case. This is a knee pad. So on my left knee... The knee pad will be here and that's gonna help aid some more cushion and keep it in place and uh it's actually pretty thick right there this is gonna help me with that because we're not going through any discomfort and pain this time i actually might even start using my crutches i have them y'all i didn't really use them but i still have them i still have my crutches i still have my surgical boot i kept everything i knew this day was coming so I got me a knee pad. Depending on you, you might want to get one too because I don't know what you're going to be doing. You might do a knee scooter. You might do crutches. Who knows? But just keep in mind, if you don't cushion that knee, it's going to start hurting after a while. Moving on. Ladies. So if you follow me, you've seen the videos. I had this really cute purse, my little coach bag. I'm coach crazy. You probably noticed. Now, I love my big old bags. However... Uh, this time I might do something different. So if you remember that cute bag I had, I actually had a crossbody before that. This time I'll be rocking this at my appointments and things. So it's like the crossbody to the bag I already had. And this is really big, actually. This is going to be big enough for me to keep all my essentials in. Maybe even some paperwork. It's called a cross file for one. So maybe a little paperwork. I can throw it in a manila folder. Now, uh, ladies, you know, getting in and out of the car. 
getting ready, uh, going to these appointments. You know, we still got to be cute and fly. This time I'm going to be able to just throw it on my shoulder like a continental soldier and keep it rolling, literally. Because having that bag and my mama got her bag and we got bags and we in a car. And yeah, I know I got a basket on my knee scooter, but it was a lot. And I think this time this is going to be my little roll doll right here. We just going to be rolling out. It's pretty big, y'all. Like, I'm going to be able to put everything in here. My wallet, my keys, my lotion, my life, you know, my habits, everything. Habits? Dang, girl. Anyway, I'm going to do the crossbody this time. So, it's a good suggestion, y'all. Y'all might want to get you, like, a cute little smaller purse you could throw over your shoulder. Some type of a crossbody just to make maneuvering and getting around easier, you know, because... You might just be able to put your important documents in, get in and out. Less stress. Less stress and less stuff. You're trying to heal and get back fine before winter. Well, at least I am. Anywho. And, of course, a knee scooter. You're going to need your knee scooter to get around for, you know, mobility purposes. And if you are on crutches, you might get tired of them crutches. You know, they start hurting all up under here. You start getting these big old shoulder muscles. And it can get... I didn't like the crutches. I still have them though, but you need scooter. You're gonna need one, preferably try to get one with a basket because you can put stuff in the basket and move around the house and move out by the public, depending on what it is you gotta do. You're gonna need one. A knee scooter is very important for you to maneuver around the house and when you're out and about. Rolling! Crutches. Kind of talked about crutches, but you're definitely gonna need them. If you're gonna have both feet done, keep all of your stuff. I still have my knee scooter. We actually never disassembled it. <laughs> the crutches have been sitting in my room since last year by my door. I guess they're ready to go. But use them. If you don't use them, at least keep them around. You might want to use them every now and then. I still have those. Make sure you have your crutches. They've been right here forever. These crutches ain't going nowhere. You're also going to need... Some type of a folder. We talked about this before. Some type of a folder to keep all of your surgery paperwork in. If you work, if you're grown and you got a job, that means you're going to be on short-term disability at FMLA. You're going to be on medical leave. Keep your documents in here. This is my new one. The last one was purple if you watched it. You want to make sure you were organized. You were up to date. Everybody got all the paperwork signed, still and delivered that they needed. And they're going to leave you the hell alone so you can get well and move on with your life. I also want to talk about the, have I talked about everything? Oh, there's one more thing I want to show y'all. Something I, um, you know, I'm getting back into my arts and crafts. If y'all are lucky, I'm going to start reefing on this channel for you. But I do want to show you something I've been working on. Actually, I'm finished now because I kept this too. Give me a moment. I told y'all I kept everything, so... Bam! <laughs> bling bling. Every time I walk around the city, bling bling. 50 wind broke the ride, 50 bling bling. Every time I buy a new ride, bling bling. Hey, 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 hey. Yes, yes, God, honey. So, when Dr. B gives me clearance, I will be stunting. Yes, God, look at that. I will be stunting on them in my surgical boot. You're gonna need this. So if you like, again, if you're gonna be getting both feet done eventually, keep all of your stuff. Don't throw your stuff away. Don't give it away. You make sure that you are good and good for life. And after that, you can consider selling and giving away or throwing away. But keep your stuff until both feet are done if that's what you want and if that's what you need. But this time, I'm gonna be sporting on them. Remember, if you, again, if you watch this channel, you've seen the pictures, it was just regular boot. But now look at me. Now when I come it's let me put my left foot in the game, y'all. Put my right foot in the game, y'all. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm about to be all over Instagram like, uh. Yes, God. All right. So, um, I actually think we've covered everything that you're going to need. But you're also going to need some patience. And you're also going to need things to keep you entertained. So, make sure you got books or coloring books, Netflix, Hulu, Make sure you got plenty of things to do. Catch up on some reading. Catch up on some sleep. Do things that make you happy. Get your mind off of it too. So if you've got to get your creative juices flowing, do that. But make sure you keep yourself entertained. 
take this time off. It's not the ideal vacation, but it is time away from work, especially if you hate your job. And it's time to just really be one with yourself and reevaluate where you're going. Like for me, I'm actually looking forward to it. This is my last foot surgery, God willing. And I don't plan on doing anything else to my feet. This should be it. I haven't had any more complications with my right foot. It's still doing really well. I did go see my doctor on 9-11 and it went really well. He checked the right foot out too. So yeah, and I will be vlogging. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure the notification bell is turned on always. I think it defaults to personalize but make sure you move it to always so you can get these notifications and be privy to every time i drop a video especially if you're following your own foot surgery journey then you want to you might want to catch up and see what's going on with mine just to make sure that you are on the ideal path for yourself so as i put my left foot in the game i will see you all later thank you so much for watching and thank you for making it to the end of this video because Information is not always going to be fast and easy. You Sometimes you need to sit back, watch, and chill. Until next time, protect your energy.